This time I'm Industrial Maker, we're making this outdoor concrete planner with a colored concrete stripe inlay. Hikoki challenged myself and a few other makers to come up with a limited tools project using their new multivolt cordless line. With summer right around the corner, a concrete planner seemed like a great idea, so I designed this planner to be made with a miter saw, circular saw, drill, and sander. All I've been doing so far is breaking down the melamine pieces that will make the form for the concrete planter. So before we go further, let's take a look at how the form will be constructed. It's pretty basic, essentially a open top box with another smaller box set inside of it. The inner box is offset by one inch from the inside walls of the outer box and is one inch shorter, which allows us to pour the planter upside down in the form. I pre-drilled and used drywall screws to assemble the form. At this point, I only partially assembled the form, leaving access from one side. You'll see why in a second. Next, I used my miter saw to cut strips of PVC trim that will form a striped pattern spanning three sides of the form. And since I left one side of the form open, it was really easy to just hold each piece up to the form, mark the angle to cut, and then line the mark up with the laser on my miter saw and cut each piece to fit. As I'm hot gluing the PVC trim to the form, you might notice that the stripe pattern is loosely inspired by Eddie Van Halen's guitar, which just goes to show you you never know where you're going to find design inspiration. Next, I'll seal the form by caulking the inner seams. For those of you that are new to the channel, this is my process for getting perfect caulk lines. I apply a layer of paste wax to the melamine, lay down a generous line of 100% silicone caulk, and then run a metal fondant ball tool over all the caulk lines. The fondant tool pushes excess caulk to the sides and leaves a clean line over the seam. With the pattern and sides caulked, I could attach the front of the form and finish off the caulking on those seams. When you use the paste wax and it makes the excess caulk really easy to peel off, it is a really satisfying process. Almost more fun than wood glue, and it kind of becomes a game to see how long of a string of caulk you can peel off before it breaks. Next, I assembled the inner form. To preempt a question I'm sure I'll get, yes, I only used hot glue to assemble the inner form. It's all that was needed and it held fine. I used electrical tape to cover the exposed edges of the melamine so they wouldn't absorb water from the concrete, which could weaken the concrete and cause the melamine to swell and deform during the concrete pour. I left the top off the inner form initially so that I had room to access inside of it and attach the inner form to the base of the outer form. I could then come back with caulk and attach the top of the form. Now if I were to make this again, I would have made the inner form a bit differently. Instead of resting the top of the inner form on the sides like I did here, I would have inset the top, which would have made it much easier to remove the inner form after the concrete cures, as you'll see later. It's time to mix up the concrete now. For this project, I'm going to use some glass fiber reinforced concrete mix, or GFRC mix for short. The mix I used was from Fishtop. And you can make this with any bagged concrete mix from a big box store. However, using GFRC allows me to make the planter thinner. I had one inch thick walls. If you use another type of concrete, just reduce the size of the inner form so the gap in resulting concrete walls will be at least an inch and a half thick. The Fishstone GFRC mix is naturally white and I actually wanted a gray planter, so I just added a bit of black pigment to the mix. filled up the form gradually, pouring a couple of inches of concrete and then stopping to vibrate the form. And I did this by picking it up and shaking it, which is a really great workout by the way, and by using a rubber mallet to tap the sides. I repeated this process until the entire form was filled with concrete. 
Now I often get a question about whether it's necessary to screed GFRC to level the top. When you make the GFRC mix a bit wetter like I did here, it's really not necessary because the mix is self-leveling. I let the concrete mix cure for about 30 hours before demolding. The outer form pulled away from the concrete really easily. However, removing the inner form proved to be a bit more challenging. The melamine sides were really wedged in, so I had to use a chisel and a lot of elbow grease to remove them. You can also use a multi-tool, if you have one, to cut out the inner form, and that, that makes it a little bit easier. With a deep pour like this, having some air bubbles in the surface of the concrete is inevitable. Now, if you like this look, you can just leave those imperfections as is. However, I wanted a smoother, modern look, so I mixed up a slurry coat and rubbed it in by hand to fill the voids in the surface. I'll sand the slurry off later, but first, I'm going to pour the colored concrete into the channel so I can sand everything at once. And now is also a good time to come back with my hammer drill and drill some drain holes in the bottom of the planter. Okay, it's time for an experiment. I have no idea how this is gonna turn out. So I've got here some red concrete pigment that's kind of reddish orange. I've got this yellow concrete pigment. I've mixed up some of the red, some of the yellow, and a mix of the red and yellow to give you an orange. And I just did a little test here and created kind of a gradient of those colors, which I think came out pretty cool. So I'm hoping that I can recreate that in this channel. Only one way to find out, let's try it out. I used cutoffs from the PVC trim to block off the ends of the channel so that I could pour one side of the stripe at a time. I also used some painter's tape to line the channels which will help me get a clean line between the colored concrete and gray concrete at the edges of the channels. So whenever you have an experiment, there's a chance that things won't go quite as you planned. My original idea was to try to mix the colors in the channel to get a consistent slow and even shift between the red, yellow, and orange. However, as soon as I started doing it, I realized this just wasn't gonna happen. I noticed that when I was mixing the colors with a stick, I was getting this kind of swirled pattern that resembled a flame. And I decided that this sort of flame-like swirling transition was pretty cool, so I just decided to roll with it. About 45 minutes later, when the concrete had firmed up enough that it wasn't slumping, but was still soft to the touch, I came back and removed the painter's tape, which pulled away the excess concrete and left me a cleaner line at the edges of the stripes. So I was sharing some in-progress shots of this on my Instagram stories, and I got a couple of DMs pointing out that I should have did something that I forgot to do. I either should have scuffed up the inside of the channels or used some concrete bonding agent that you can buy at any big box store in the channels in order to make sure that the new layer of concrete bonds properly to the old concrete. Now, hopefully it'll be okay, but if you're doing this project at home, definitely recommend doing one or preferably both of those things. Later that night, when my high school friend Woody came by to help me out, we corrected my earlier mistakes by scuffing up the insides of the channels and painting in some concrete bonding agent before we poured the colored concrete into the channels. The next day, after the second side of the stripes had dried, I could go back with the colored concrete and finish off the gradient on the third side. I'm making this stand from premium cedar planks that are available at most big box stores. I sized the stand to position the planter just above the top of the fence on my deck. Now this is a really specific design to my needs, so I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail on the build process for the stand. Instead, I wanna take a second and tell you about the Hikoki and Metabo HPT multi-volt, 36-volt cordless tools I've been using in this build. These are the first ever tools that allow you to choose between corded and cordless use 
Imagine if you're at the job site and you run out of batteries and have the ability to just plug that same tool in. It could save you tons of time. I've been using the Hikoki tools personally for a couple months now, and I've also used just about every other color tool in the past. Beyond just the switchable corded and cordless technology, I've found them to be premium high quality tools that stack up against any other brand I've used. So if you're in the market for cordless tools and aren't one of the lucky ones that wins a Hikoki Maker Set from the contest linked to in the description below, just go check them out. Get your hands on them. I think you'll be impressed, same as I was. And just to clarify, these tools are being sold under the Metabo HPT name in North America and under the Hikoki name in the rest of the world. With the stand made, all that was left to do was sand and seal the concrete to get a nice finish. I used my random orbit sander starting with 150 grit and working my way all the way up to 240 grit. I also came back with 400 grit sandpaper and wet sanded lightly by hand which gives it a smooth polished look. Before applying the acrylic sealer, I wetted down the surface of the concrete thoroughly. I also diluted the acrylic sealer for the initial coats. By wetting the surface and diluting the sealer, this helps the sealer to actually penetrate into the surface so that you get an inner protection as well as a surface layer protection on the concrete. I gradually applied less diluted coats until I got to a full strength layer at the end. All that's left to do now is to pot the plants. And I just put some succulents in there for now, but I'd really like to put something a little bigger there. And I'm a total novice here. So if you have some recommendations for plants that could go in a plant of this size, leave a comment and let me know. So as usual, I want to talk quickly about some things I learned or things I could have done differently to maybe improve the project. And I'm really happy how this came out and I like it overall, but because I was trying to make it simpler, I poured all the concrete, and if you've seen some of my past videos, you know that I sometimes like to spray on GFRC. So there was some cracking in the stripes, and it isn't quite even with the edges between the gray and the colored concrete because of the way we did it pouring it in. And it still looks great, I think, but if you wanted a perfectly smooth surface, you could mask off the lines, spray or brush in a layer of the colored concrete to make the stripes, pull away the masking tape, and then spray the gray back coat over it, and you would get a perfectly flush stripe with a surface. And it would take a little more work, it would take spraying the face coat, but I think you would get an even cleaner result if you did it that way. You also are gonna to wanna to go check out the videos from Rag and Bone Brown and Chris Salmoni that they did as part of this Hikoki Limited Tool Challenge. Definitely hit them up, link in the description below. And there's a link to a Hikoki contest where you can go to win some of the tools that we use in the contest. So you definitely wanna check that out too. As always, I'd love to have you be part of this community and to follow along with all my future projects. So make sure to hit that sub button and the bell button to get notified when my future projects drop. That's it for this time and I'll see you next time.